Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Please, please subscribe. is still recovering in the hospital after he was shot over the weekend. We just received this photo giving us our first look at the officer. That's 25-year-old officer Malik Derekod. He was shot after he went to a suspect's home to follow up on a traffic stop. Yeah, we checked today. He's still in critical but stable condition. Officer Derekod has worked in law enforcement since he was 15, getting a start with the North Miami Beach Police Department. He was sworn in as a Jacksonville Sheriff's Officer in 2021, and the baby you see in this photo is his son. Senator Rick Scott just shared a statement wishing the officer a smooth recovery. He tweeted, please join Ann and me as we pray for Officer Malik Derricotte, a true hero who is in critical condition after being injured on duty. Florida stands proudly with this brave officer, his family, and the JSO community throughout this difficult time. The gunman, 32-year-old Tyleko Maduro, ran from the shooting, causing a manhunt for him. Officers found him later with a fatal self-inflicted gunshot wound. And this is the gun, JSO says, Maduro used when he shot Officer Derricod. News for Jack's reporter Scott Johnson joining us live from the neighborhood in the Duclay portion of the west side where this all happened. Scott? Kent, the police tape is gone, but you can still tell something happened here. Look at the yard right there, tore up by the police scene. The front of the house completely boarded off. You can't get in or out after this tragic incident on the west side where police go in days after a traffic stop and they're met with gunfire. The garage door now lying in the front yard and windows now covered with plywood are a stark reminder of what happened in this usually quiet and tranquil suburban neighborhood just a day ago. That's a recording of police on a loudspeaker pleading with 32 year old Tyleko Maduro to come out of his home. That didn't happen following the shooting. This is the gun JSO says they recovered. We also asked the sheriff about why officers went to his home so early in the morning. There's no reason, no reason to wait. I think the best time that you knock on someone's door is, is as early as possible. Was it scary when they're telling you all this or? Um, I mean, initially, yeah, you know, you're not sure what's going on and everything happens, you know, so fast. And then all of a sudden, you know, you see the cops at your door and they got like the, you know, the, the heavy weaponry. Neighbors like Chuck Simmons had to leave the area while it was still unclear whether there was an active threat. I mean, it's scary, you know. You take everything into consideration as far as what happened. You know, this young man lost his life. There was a police officer that was gravely injured. And you still kind of got to look back and say, like, okay, at least nothing else happened. You know, like, there's, there was nothing else. You know, nobody else was injured. Nobody else got hurt. But not everyone in this large neighborhood totally understands what happened here. The immediate neighbors are aware, but a block or two over, there's confusion. They just saw a lot of police. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. I had no idea. No, no one knows back there. I can like assure you that no one knows what happened. That they didn't realize it was right here. No, yeah, no, we thought it was just a car like that has hit the garage. I spent the morning and afternoon talking to people who live here. They all tell me this is a neighborhood where there's little trouble. If you surrender peacefully, nothing will happen to you, sir. And they're not accustomed to what shattered their general feeling of safety in the early morning hours. Stop, Nico. Stop. Stop. When police came knocking, looking for a man who had...
Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Please, please subscribe.